Brought to you from high atop the water tower in exciting downtown Erin. Erin Community Radio reaches as far east as Ballinafad and north to Alton. Ballinafad, pronounced backwards, is a Definilab. And Alton, of course, is not LA. It might interest you to know that a recent CRTC ruling requires that all broadcasts be tra transmitted backwards for the forward impaired. And now, a public message. Hey everybody, wherever you are, there's a new way of talking. It's gonna go far. You take the letters and the words, turn them all around, you take the last ones first, then you check out the sound, talk backwards. Talk backwards. Now I know what you're thinking, that sounds strange, talking forward so long it's hard to change, but it's just like metric, once you get the drift, you twist your tongue, give your palate a lift, you take your favorite phrase, read it in the mirror, and practice that about a half a year, and then scraw, cad, knee, clap, me, em, the cool, your irregular talk, and bass, backwards, fool, talk backwards. Talk backwards. Talking backwards is reaching the nation. Talk with backwards is a new sensation. You'll amaze your friends when you start to rap. Don't say pass the butter. Say red a bit zap. Red a bit zap. Red a bit zap. You rap with your friend. She's a little bit shy. Don't say I love you. Say ew evil eye. Ew evil eye. And I always will. See if that don't take off the chill. Talk backwards. Talk backwards. Well, the other day, I was walking down the street and saw a person that I wanted to meet. I said, excuse me, miss. Resita Ted Iggy that's you, Iggy that's too many met. I said, am I getting through to you yet? She said, you're a gent in the first degree, and I love it when you talk backwards to me. Talk backwards. <laughs> talk backwards. You never can tell. One of these nights, those that talk backwards will demand their rights. They rise up angry, get form a solution, get a solution in the form of an amendment to the Constitution, and guarantee them freedom of reverse elocution in every TV show that airs. will have to be captioned for the forward impaired. Talk backwards. Talk backwards. Talk backwards. Talk backwards. Thank you. Welcome to um, this meeting gathering, and uh, let me introduce David. Thanks, Eric. Thanks very much, Eric. Mm -hmm. Eric Nagler, let's give him a big hand, please. I brought my vinyl record. It's out there, and uh, I'm hoping to have Eric sign it afterwards. Really glad you're here. My name is David Spencer. Uh, back in January of 2003, uh, uh, Pastor Jake Birch sent me an email saying, how would you get a community radio station uh, going? And so I sent him back a little message. And uh, this past summer, 2003 of August, uh, most of us were in a blackout. Do you remember where you were in August the 14th, 2003? Well, that day after, I had phoned the mayor to see if uh, I could help some seniors, and uh, as soon as he picked up the phone, the power went back on, and we talked a little bit about how it would be a great communication vehicle if we had a radio station here in Erin, and that's basically how the thing started. I want to say thank you very much to our co-chair, Jay Mowitz. Uh, many people who have helped uh, put on tonight, uh, Brett, uh, Brett Gervin, our music teacher here at Aaron District High, all the students who are helping. We've got Stephanie and Andrew, and we have Jason and Katie, and all sorts of people who are behind the scenes out front, Scott uh, Hammond, and uh, um, Scott Hannenberg was playing some music for us. You'll see more people uh, this evening, plus Eric will be coming on back again tonight to uh, do some more music for us. I'm really glad you're here, and Erin Community Radio is really glad you're here. This is an evening where you're going to find out a bit more about who we are, 
what we're hoping to accomplish with a community radio station with some samples of people who've actually put together some programs. And this evening we'd like you to enjoy what you see, uh, ask some questions, and we're hoping that you'll somehow figure out how you can help support us, either as a volunteer, maybe uh, financial contributions, joining Aaron Community Radio, whatever you think is best, we'd just love to have you uh, participate. So now we go with today's fantastic technology. We're going to go to via satellite, pseudo satellite, all the way to the Erin Town Hall for a message from our Mayor of Erin, uh, Mr. Rod Finney. Welcome, folks. Uh, we're here tonight uh, to hear about the new radio station that's going to happen here in Erin. And unfortunately, I can't be here tonight. I've got a council meeting on, but I do want to offer my, my welcome to you. The idea first came about from Mr. Spencer uh, when he approached me about a way of getting information out to the citizens of Erin at the time of the last I just go down there. Well, I really see this, this uh, being beneficial for the young people, so. uh, particularly as they try to find uh, fields that they're interested in, uh, to explore their talents, their musical talents, their communication talents. Uh, I think it will also be helpful for the seniors. They have stories to tell, wonderful stories to tell, that the rest of the community should hear. I think the agricultural community also needs to get their, their message out to the people because so often they're so busy working they don't get a chance to tell people what's going on. In addition, sports is very active in the community and the, the opportunity to broadcast sports live to the rest of the community, I think that's something that could be exciting. Uh, in conclusion, I just want to welcome you all here again tonight and hope you remember this is going to take some money and Get ready to dig into your pockets. <laughs> and then he's gone. Just like a politician. Okay, um, I'd just like to say welcome to everybody. Um, I'm going to start off by introducing and saying a little bit about uh, Jay Mowat. Jay Mowat has been a broadcasting journalist with the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation for almost 30 years. He is currently the supervising producer for the documentary channel uh, project and innovative excuse me <laughs> innovative in which the CBC supplies a documentary program to the digital documentary channel owned by Chorus Entertainment it's a bit of a mouthful uh, he has produced television programs and document uh, documentaries in Winnipeg and Toronto he has been a senior producer of Sunday Report and CBLT Regional News, as well as the executive producer of CBC News World Programming, originating from Toronto. Jay has also been a radio and television uh, trainer and the CBC and television news instructor at Ryerson Polytechnic University in Toronto. Jay's main interests is in news and in information and will contribute editorial content into the station as well as helping with training the and assisting our volunteers. He is currently one of the co-chairs of the Aaron Community Leadership Team. So, Jay. Thank you very much for that wonderful introduction. I hope I live up to it. Um, yeah, well, thank you all for coming out, first of all. Um, I think this is a great turnout for everybody. Uh, and what I want to do for the next 10 minutes is tell you a little bit about what we have been doing um, for the last few months, what David Spencer has been doing for the last year. Yeah, so Jay's doing our little, little talk thing now. So, yeah, play as long as you can. There's a voice. It's the voice of God. Oops. <laughs> anyway, um, let me start out by saying that in a world where it's increasingly global in nature and scope, uh, increasingly far, decision makers are far, far away from where you tend to be. There are a number of us who really do believe that the lo local community is the most important thing to work with. And we want things to be on a scale and a level at which we can deal with it and we can do something about it. And Aaron Community Radio is one of those initiatives. I think that's very important for that kind of thing to be able to be done. It's, it's local, it deals with this community, it deals with the small towns around this community, and I think that's kind of why the group of us have been here. Now, as I say, I'm going to spend about 10 minutes telling you what we've done and where we're going to be going for the next several months. 
And then near the end of this uh, meeting, uh, closer to uh, 9 o'clock, we'll be able to take some questions. So if you have anything you want to find out about, any questions about the organization, about the process that we're going through, feel free to, uh, to uh, ask them at that point. Now, basically, for the past few months, what we've been doing is a bunch of research. We've been trying to figure out how a community radio station works and what steps we have to get to to get it on the air. Um, there's a great co uh, tradition of community radio in Canada. Uh, the CRTC, the Canadian Radio and Television Commission, has been very supportive of small community-based projects, both campus radio and community radio. And it actually tries to facilitate uh, the, the creation and the organization of small community-based organizations that are able to put together enough of an, of an organization and volunteer base to be able to program a radio station for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Some of you may know about the, uh, the, the one great example in this country, which is Vancouver Co-op Radio. It's been going on for some 20 or 30 years and is one of the most popular stations in Vancouver, and it's all volunteer-driven and volunteer-based. As I said, we've been doing a little bit of research back and forth. Uh, we've been talking to a whole bunch of people who have been involved in community radio. Uh, a couple of those folks who are here tonight, by the way, uh, from the Orangeville station. Uh, and if you have any questions about their operation, what they've been doing, they, they'd be more than willing to help out and, and ask and answer questions. Um, there are several different organizations around. We've talked to Humber College people in their campus radio station, uh, the University of Toronto uh, campus radio station. Um, uh, there's a couple of other smaller stations around. We've just been gathering information and gathering ideas of where sh we should be going and how we should be operating with. And we actually contracted with a community radio consultant who uh, lives in Hamilton, a fellow by the name of Barry Ruger, who actually has been very helpful in terms of actually helping us out develop and set up our organization. Now, the first problem that we had to encounter, because without the airwaves out there, we don't have much of a radio station. And of course, we live very near to the sleeping giant, the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area. And some of you may know that about two years ago, the Greater or the CRTC gave away the very last radio frequency that's available in the GTA. And we're very close to that area. So one of the concerns we had to begin with was we didn't want to spend a huge amount of time, effort, and money if at the end of the day there was no available frequency. Well, we managed to scrape together a couple of bucks and we hired an engineer, which is what you have to do under these cases, to do a frequency search. And lo and behold, there are two small frequencies left on the dial that we would have access to given our broadcast footprint and pattern. Um, by the way, we're considering putting the, uh, we have not proved yet, but putting an antenna on the top of the air and water tower uh, and having a transmitter of about 50 watts. The engineer came back and said, the best likeliest frequency was 101.5, and that's what we're going to be striving towards and working towards. So now that we know that we actually can get on the air, now the process starts to be able to get the license and get the approvals necessary in order to be able to make that happen. Now, there's two things that we have to go through just in terms of the bureaucracy of the Canadian government. First of all, we have to uh, um, apply to Industry Canada for the, uh, the, to make sure that the technology works and the frequency is correct and all the things that we're planning on doing are correct. Uh, for that, we need to fund, uh, finance and fund an engineer's report of some six or seven thousand dollars. This is not a cheap project, ladies and gentlemen. We're into some serious coin here. You just don't do this on a volunteer basis. You need professional help. So we have to find the money to get an engineer's report done. We apply to Industry Canada. At the same time, we apply to the CRTC. Now, this could happen tomorrow. It might happen in a few months. It all depends on when we're ready to be able to go about this. Now, what the CRTC requires is very interesting. And I think part of the reason you're here tonight is the reason that the, the, one of the things the CRTC does require us to do. The CRTC will not give us a, a radio license unless we're part, or we can prove that we're part of a broad-based community organization that has good roots in the community from all sorts of different places, from young people to seniors to various community groups, to very ethnic groups, to various language groups. So we have to, over the course of the next few months, make sure that our organization is very broad-based and that we can uh, include most of the community of Aaron within the confines of our organization. Uh, and I guess tonight is the very first start of that. We will be able to document to the CRTC that we started on September 28th with a public meeting that was very well attended, I think. Um, and that's the first start. Second uh, part we have to do, we have to create a nonprofit uh, uh, company or organization with a board of directors that's been elected by the membership. We need members in order to be able to do that. So tonight we will start on our membership campaign. We're going to be selling memberships out at the door, so if you're interested in this organization, please consider buying a membership. Um, the entitlements of that membership we're still working at. We're still in the very early stages of this organization. But it, there will be certain things like an email newsletter. You'll get a chance to vote for the board of directors and a number of other things like that. 
Um, the CRTC then requires us to have a programming plan um, that they will approve. Now, um, we'll be talking about programming here in just a couple of minutes in more specific, but let me tell you what the CRTC will be looking for for what we do in terms of our own radio station. Um, this is not just a music-based station. There will have to be at least 25% of the airtime should be related to talk programming, talk programming, interview uh, views, phone-in shows, documentary programming. So in our programming proposal, we have to have that kind of content availability. Um, we have to program 35% Canadian content in the music. And the music that we do program, the CRTC does not want us to duplicate what conventional broadcasters are doing. We're supposed to be an alternative, something different. So we have to broadcast mostly, as much as we possibly can, non-conventional music. This is not going to be a top 40 station. There will be plenty of jazz, plenty of classical, plenty of ethnic music, plenty of oldies and all sorts of different kinds of things. Uh, sorry? Barbershop. barbershop quartets from a barbershopper up there. So it's got to be a very broad range, uh, non-conventional, non-mainstream kind of programming. Uh, we also have to find, file a capital plan. Uh, we have to do an operational budget. We have to have a fundraising plan established. As I said before, this is not a cheap operation. And we have to consider possibly full-time or part-time staff. The CRTC really believes that a purely volunteer organization, if they're going to give a permanent license over to us, uh, they want to see us continue longer than just a few years or a few months. And they look at the, uh, the, the, at the presence of full-time or part-time staff within an organization uh, as part of that proof that we'll be around for the long haul. Now, that requires a certain fundraising plan in order to be able to establish itself. But we're a long way down the road at this stage. Now, question of what kind of money we're looking at here. And this is really where the rubber hits the road, as the cliche goes. Um, in order to be able to get the technological equipment to be able to broadcast um, this operation, which includes the transmitter facilities, the boards, the studios, any renovations we have to do, we're looking at somewhere between the neighborhood of $50,000 and $100,000 just for the technology alone. So again, this is not a cheap operation. And we have to raise that money locally. We have to go out and fundraise. If we have to do car washes for the next two years, we have to raise that money ourselves. And then uh, we also have to have some kind of operational fundraising plan. And the best bets for most community radio stations that are successful is an operational budget of about a minimum of $100,000 a year in order to be able to stay on the air. Again, not a, not a small amount of money. So this is a very serious kind of thing that we're embarking on right now. It's very important. Um, last point that I'd like to make is how long is this going to take? Um, it could happen within a matter of months. Uh, we've had some really energetic people that have been working with us so far. If lots of folks tonight come out and become members of the organization, many hands help out, so we should be able to do this in, in a fairly quick manner. On the other side of that, uh, there's another community radio station project that's currently ongoing in the eastern part of Ontario. And they've been actively engaged in operating with a uh, volunteer board of directors, fundraising operations, and they've been doing it for the last two, uh, two and a half years and have not submitted their CRTC approvals yet, or their application yet. So we could be talking a couple of years down the road. We don't know. It all depends on the energy and the effort that the community organization that we're trying to build here tonight uh, is able to supply to the operation. We can supply, you know, we, we know kind of what we have to do, but it's got to have a certain amount of energy. We're going to have a booth at the fall fair. Uh, we need to hold fundraising projects. We need to have more information nights, and we need help to be able to do that. And I think uh, that's what we're asking for you tonight. Now, that's the end of what I've got to say in terms of what we're doing here. Uh, if you have any questions, there are plenty of people around who can answer them. We'll hold those off till the end of the session, I believe. And uh, anyway, thank you all for coming out. This is very pleasing. Thank you. Okay, hi, everyone. Um, I'd first like to extend a welcome to everyone. I'm really, this is a great turnout. And um, next on our list, I'd like to introduce to you all um, Mr. Brett Gervin. Um, Mr. Gervin has, uh, is the director of music at Aaron District High School and leads five permanent music groups and several smaller student-led groups who perform in many concerts each year. He conducts the Aaron Concert Wins, the Aaron Junior Wins, the Aaron Jazz Band, and the Aaron Greasy Pit Band, an ensemble which performs in the annual music show. Um, Brett is very interested in promoting student involvement in their, in their community and in developing the desire uh, in students to learn more about their own community. Brett is also a freelance electric guitarist and the technical director for Royal City Music Productions Incorporated. He sees uh, community radio as a very important and exciting part of the education and personal growth of future students. 
The Aaron Community Radio Station is needed to keep the community thriving through better local communication. And Brett C. is taking a leading role in developing the Aaron Station as a priority second only to his teaching responsibilities at Aaron District High School. The area that he feels he can make the biggest contribution in is in the development of a well-rounded local programming schedule. So with no further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Brett Gervin. And thank you again to everybody for coming. Uh, so we gave you the bad news, and that is that we're not going to be on the air tomorrow or next week. It's going to take a year, maybe two, maybe three. But I think that this is a project that is worth waiting for or worth working on. Uh, and, and what I like about it is that I've met so many people in the community through this project already, and I'm starting to really get a sense of, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've loved the, the five years, that this is my fifth year at Aaron District High School, I've loved every year. Uh, I'm sure you're going to love the uh, other 25 years that I'm here. but. Uh, I have got to really get a sense of the community and I'm, I'm learning more every day and I'd like to see this community on the air. I'd also like to see our students on the air and that's, that's the, I, I'm sure it's no surprise to you why, uh, why I would be enthusiastic about this project. I think that this is an opportunity not only to get our local talent on the air, uh, both um, from the school and outside of the, the school and the greater community. Uh, it's also a chance for us to get into some technical training uh, and have something outside of the school environment for these students to, to aspire to and to also learn from. So, and I thought about what I was going to say to you tonight and I thought I should really do what it is that I've been trained to do and always wanted to do and that is simply to play music for you. Uh, it's going to be uh, for the next few minutes a sample of what we're going to have on our station and it isn't all music. It's like what uh, uh, Mr. Mowat was saying. Uh, this is just a sample of some of the programs that we plan to put on the air. Uh, most of the people that you're going to hear recorded hosting shows have already said this is the show I want to do. There's a lot of people in the community that I haven't got to record yet. Uh, Jennifer Mitchell who I see right here is not on this demo CD yet but uh, will be before you hear it at the fair and uh, as well as the um, Upper Credit Human Maine Society, uh, the Agri Agricultural Society, and a few others who've expressed a lot of interest in the station. Uh, to those people here tonight from those groups, you'll be on the next recording. But without further ado, here's the recording, and um, uh, thank you for uh, being here, and uh, once the recording is over, we'll be on to our next speaker. So here we go. Okay, next um, it is my privilege to uh, introduce to you my co mc Katie Watson. Katie Watson is a grade 12 student at Aaron District High School and has been a resident of Aaron all of her life. She attended Aaron Public School and graduated at the age of 13 with honors and the Koningsby Women's Institute Citizenship Award. For the past three years, Katie has been a music student under the influence of Mr. Brett Gervins and his guidance, of course, um, where she played the trumpet and was a member of the Aaron District High School Concert Wins. Katie has always possessed a keen interest in theater arts, music, and creative writing. She has also developed a strong interest in the media industry and hopes to pursue a career in this field. In her opinion, Aaron Community Radio can help local bands showcase their talents and expose themselves to the variety of listeners. Katie. Thank you, Jason, for that lovely intro. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Katie, as Jason just mentioned. Um, I'm assisting Aaron Community Radio with the youth programming aspect of things. Um, however, today I'd like to kind of familiarize everyone here with the excellent experience this organization offers individuals interested in the media industry. I'm very interested in pursuing a career in the radio broadcasting and management um, industry, although I have only been with the radio sta with this radio station for about five months, I've already gained a lot of really practical experience um, in the organization, um, and a lot of uh, logistical aspects of working in the broadcast industry. For other students in the future, the amount of practical experience will only grow. Once we succeed in launching this station, people interested will also be able to learn about skills in the radio industry and gain real on-air experience. After researching uh, media programs offered at Ryerson University, Humber, and Seneca Colleges, I've noticed that the courses taught in these programs are very intense. Being involved with this organization will help me immensely when studying um, and radio in post-secondary education. As well, I will already be um, very acquainted with the equipment language, and language skills needed uh, for succeeding in this industry. 
I'm really happy to be involved in bringing our community closer together through this radio station. And this project is not going to be an easy task, but uh, so far everyone involved is having a great time getting it started. So this is all for now. I'm Katie Watson, <laughs> signing off. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Oh, hi. My name's Scott Hannenberg. I enjoy uh, long walks on the beach and reading poetry. guitars that are in tune. Come on. Treat, come on out Wednesday, October the 6th, and see Erin District High School at 7 o'clock for only $5 perform the Beatles' White Album. That's right. That's right. That was a plug. Thanks, Scott. That was excellent. Good job. Um, next, I'd like to introduce everyone to Norm Tyler. Norm Tyler spent five years in the Canadian Navy, the RCNVR, during World War II. He grew up in Lachine, Quebec, and graduated from McGill University. For 25 years, Norm taught English at Port Credit Secondary School in Mississauga. He has been an active member of EWAG for 19 years. His love for the violin began at age seven, here in Aaron. Norm is actively involved in the band, The Music Makers. They have gig gigs lined up for every Wednesday where they play old time foot stomping, hand clapping tunes. So here he is, everyone, Norm. <laughs> Can I get a check? 
chance to sit down as well. <laughs> and I won't have to watch the I won't have to watch that. How's that? Can you hear me? Not too loud? My wife told me not to get too close to the mic because I have a very loud voice. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dave for inviting me to say a few words on behalf of seniors. Um, as uh, Kate has already said, I've, I've worked uh, and served on the EWAG uh, board of directors and, and as a fundraiser and for the last 19 years. I, I guess the, the service that I've done to the community is reciprocal because I, I certainly have had a, a wonderful 20 years of retirement and still going, still going strong. So um, our uh, current mayor, uh, Rod, and I worked on the board of directors and uh, we, we did some uh, intergenerational work with, with grades fives and grade sixes. Uh, we did a choral group, a choral singing uh, type of thing uh, with the help from a, I think it was a, a grade seven music teacher and she was a very dedicated person and she helped us get the uh, seniors together with these grade fives and six and during the time of rehearsals and other times there was a great deal of uh, bonding going on and that's been very evident to me in the last few years as I've been around town I've heard uh, some of the young people who are now, or th they were only eight or ten year olds then, and they're now in their teens, they're young men and women, and I he still hear them saying, my grand friend. It's a term that I just can't get out of my system. I think it's a wonderful term, grand friend. And it's all because of the intergenerational program that EWAG uh, sponsored. We also had teenagers from the schools come in to do interviewing, and you've heard about that already, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much. The uh, seniors were interviewed at 109 Club, and certainly, uh, again, there is a reciprocal uh, action here. Uh, many of the seniors enjoyed telling their, their uh, experiences, and certainly the teens enjoyed uh, hearing them. And <coughs> excuse me, David asked me to say a bit about our band. I wasn't going to, but... <laughs> He asked me to. Uh, we have a small